So, here we are. Uh, we're going to place um, our logo as a sign on the side of this building. And I've already created a uh, my logo here in Illustrator, and it's an Illustrator object, and I saved it as an Illustrator file. So it's a .ai file on my hard drive. So back over in Photoshop, I started with my original photograph, and I have cloned out uh, the existing sign and this is where I'm starting. So the first thing I want to do here now this is different from what I showed you in class as far as I did one raster object and one vector object this is going to be placing a smart vector file so it's the best of both worlds um, and we'll try that and see how it works. Okay so file place I will go find my um, AI logo and that's it and I'm gonna say place here I'm going to use the crop box and say OK and voila. Right now I can scale it. It's a vector so it really doesn't matter how big or small it is but I just want to get it a little bit bigger on here and then just hit return. With this layer selected I'm going to go up into 3D and pick new 3D extrusion from selected layer and I will pop right into the 3D view. Now again, my logo is this direction and my shadow's underneath it. And I really want to turn the logo so that the back of it is laying on the ground plane. And then I will rotate my view so the shadow falls behind the logo and not underneath it. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have this selected. There's our current view. This is our um, this is our object, and this is the light. So I'm going to start with the object itself, come up here to properties. I'm also in the um, 3D um, layout so that I can get this kind of uh, easy access to the layout of the 3D tools. It might prompt you to do that. If you're not in that, say, do you want to move to the 3D layout and just say yes. So right here at the top of the properties, when I have this selected, all these will change. I'm going to go right here to the coordinates. In this coordinate, the top middle one, I'm going to change to 90 degrees and then just hit return. And I'll flip my logo up on its back. Now I'm going to go back to the first one, the one with the two stars, and I'm going to change the extrusion depth smaller. Slowly. I do not want to go negative. I only want to collapse it up um, so that it's not so thick and sticking off the building so far. So I think that looks fine. Next I'm going to go up into the, under the 3D um, menu and snap the object to the ground plane so my shadow and my object are together. Now I'm done moving the object itself and I'm going to start moving the camera. So I'm going to switch to current view. I'm going to come up here to these tools and then I'm going to pick the this move tool. These are all different tools to move the camera. I'm not moving the object but I'm moving the camera. Okay, so this is a little squirrely and I did some practice so I'm better now. Um, Anyway, let me show you what these move tools do. This one does this strange rotation thing, and it also, when you hold the shift key down, does a kind of a foreshortening deal. Okay, it gives you some perspective. The other thing that changes the perspective, and oh, by the way, what we're trying to do is get these lines to line up with visible clues that we have in our photograph so that we can get the angle um, and the perspective correct. Don't worry about the way the light is, sh is shining on it. Will affect will affect the light last. Okay, and I messed around with this a little bit, and I found that 43 right here worked for me pretty well. So for field of view, this is the length in millimeters of the lens, um, and this particular shot, I found that that worked out pretty well. So mess with this if you have trouble. If not, oh, and also make sure that's always on perspective and not orthographic, which has no perspective. Okay, and then you just kind of keep rotating this thing around using the um, the uh, shift key to change um, the angle and eventually, someday, hopefully soon, it'll all get lined up, more or less. 
or not. Oh, I'm starting to look better. I'm feeling better. Okay, another nice thing is it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. It can be close. I'm going to use this rotation tool to move it uh, rotate it a little so I can split the difference between those, those lines a little bit. I'm going to move where it is on the background with this tool. I can change the size of the object by moving the camera in and out, making that object smaller or larger. Okay, so when I have it, it can be moved again. When I have it about where I want it, um, then I'm going to start dealing with the 3D part of this. I think I can make this better. Can't I? Can't I please make this better? Oh, this makes me crazy. Close enough. So here, now that I have that taken care of, I'm going to um, change the light. So I'm going to come down here and click on the light, which gives me the umbrella thing. And I'm looking for visual clues again on the picture. And I see that my light is running that direction. So I'm just going to grab the handle of this and swivel our infinite light up until my drop shadows start to look more like um, the environment that they're in. Now don't worry so much about um, the darkness that's coming across the front of that. We can color correct our logo colors back to where they were after we're done. But right now, I'm going to put those right about there. If you have soft drop shadows, you can change the shadow edges with this. You get a really bad preview, but when it renders out, it renders out nice. I'm going to leave mine at about 12. Yeah, that should work okay. They're pretty hard drop shadows here. Maybe I'll just leave it off. I'll put it down to 9. Now I'm at that point where I want to um, render the object itself. So be careful not to just hit render. You need to make yourself a selection around what you're trying to render. And that way you don't have to watch the whole thing um, or don't have to wait for the whole thing to render. So selection, go down here to render and then see what it does. And a little small section shouldn't take too long. Oh, one more thing while we're here. Let's, I'm hitting the escape key to stop here. Let's look at the, um, the bevel. If I am on the object itself, and then I click on this cap thing, oops, wrong tool, then I get this um, heads up display that'll allow me to bevel it. I'm gonna move in here closer. This is the width of the bevel. So you can see, if I slide it this way, nothing happens, but this way I'm starting to get a little bevel around the outside. See that? Okay. Um, the other button on here, let's go ahead and make that bigger. The other one on here makes the top round or not round, so I can balloon the thing up, um, but I can't go negative. This is the how far the top of it pops out from that bevel, so I can push it forward or I can push it even down into it so it has a little lip all the way around it. So if you want to mess around with the bevel, um, have a good time. There it is. I'm going to leave that little bevel on there um, so we can see what it look like. looks like when we render it. Okay, one more time. This and render. And that's looking pretty good for me. This may take some time. So what I'm going to do is escape out of that zoom back out a little bit, choose just the area that I need to render, right? And then I'm going to hit render one more time. And you'll hear my fan and my computer come on because it's using up a lot of CPU right now. Okay, I can let this go as long as I want to. Um, the longer it goes, the more it will refine um, my 3D, but it really slows down. It could take quite a long time. And what I'm going to do right now is say that this is good enough. And I'll hit escape. I'm going to go right back over to my layers. And then I'm going to turn this into a smart object so I don't cause it to, to go to low res again. So I'm going to um, either right click on this and choose um, Convert to Smart Object, however you want to do that. 
and now I can't hurt it. I can move it around in here, I can do color corrections, but I'm not going to send it back to low res, okay? So um, next thing I want to do is do a color correction to make this pop off the building uh, or come back to the color that it should be. So above this, I'm going to have to do this up here. I'm going to, uh, under layers, do, well, I don't know where this stuff is, uh, new adjustment layer, and then we'll use curves, and here's our curves dialog box. I have no highlight. I have no highlight at all. So I'm going to take this property box out here and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start moving this this direction. Now I only want the color correction to go on the logo itself. So I'm going to come over here and not do that. Yes, create clipping mask, which is right here. So I right clicked or control click on the layer and now I have a clipping mask and my adjustment only affects the logo itself. So that's pretty bright. I'll push this back a little bit. There we go. So it looks more realistic. I don't want this white to be whiter than this because that's white in the image, right? So something like that. And you can mess around and do whatever color corrections you want. All right, on the background, I'm concerned with this color looking terrible with my logo. So right over my background image, I'm gonna do another color correction. <clears throat> so back over here was that layer, adjustment layer. And I'm gonna do hue saturation here because I can do a color correction that will change the color of this red without changing, um, oops, I'm gonna name the new layer, of course, without changing uh, much of anything else because it's such a distinct color on this image. So with my properties, I mean my um, um, hue saturation level over the background and not over my logo, I'm gonna choose the closest color I can to here from master selection, and that's red. I'm gonna refine that selection by clicking on this eyedropper, not the one with the plus or the minus, but the one with nothing, and I'm going to click on this red background. It will move my target slightly closer to what this is. Now all I have to do is change the hue. To change the hue is start moving this one direction or another. And I'm thinking that I want to go about here, something to match the um, this color a little bit better. All right, so there we go. There's my color correction, and I'm ready to save my project. All right, see you later.